Now go next to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Okay, it says here, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Remember what it said back there in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12? He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. See? If you are a steward of the mysteries of God there, you read in chapter 4, verse 1, let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. If God reveals mysteries to you from the scriptures that the average person doesn't understand, he expects you to be faithful in that thing. It's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. It's not an option. If the Lord is going to use you, he can't use you if you're backing down. He can't use you if you're compromising. He can only use you if you are standing firm on the Word of God and not backing down. See? It's required. Now look at verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 through 14. Now we're going to get into some of the good stuff. All right? You say, Brian, I, I really do feel that uh, I want to be used of the Lord. I want to... You know, I, I feel that I, I have the right humility. I feel that passion, that desire to really preach the word. You know, there's just nobody in my area. I've seen people going to hell. There's just no truth out there. My friends, my family, they're turning against me and all this other stuff. You know, I'm ready for ministry. Well, here's what you can expect. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. He's right there to the Corinthians. Okay, The Corinthians are basically, if you want to have a type of a church type of people that you're dealing with mostly today, the Corinthians would be the most accurate. The Corinthians were carnal. They were fleshly. Uh, just, you know, having all kinds of problems with sin. And Paul is dealing with them. And he's saying, you guys are getting along with the world, but we're despised. But let's look here, verse 11. Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. Boy, we can give a, a big amen to that, you know, my wife and I. Um, it's a little rough sometimes having no certain dwelling place, you know. And we're taking our time here trying to find a place because we want to make sure we get the right place. You know, I'm not going to go someplace else and then have to move again and then have to move again. I don't want to do that, you know. And it's, you know, you say, well, that sounds difficult. Yeah, it's a lot more difficult that way. But part of the thing is, too, we're praying about it. And wherever the Lord wants us to go, we're going to go there. You know? And the Lord's not going to just be, bam, right there. Go. You know? The Lord's going to wait and give us the right place when the right time comes. All right? Look at verse 12. And labor, working with our own hands... Are you afraid of uh, work? You're not going to do too good ministry. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Are you ready to be persecuted in ministry? Are you ready to be reviled? You know what reviled means? That means people saying, you stinking hate criminal. How dare you narrow-minded, bigoted, fundamentalist, you idiot, you jerk, you retard. You, you know, are you ready to be reviled? going to come. Verse 13, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. You know, if I were to tell you that ministry is just this lovely, pleasant thing, walk in the park with butterflies and roses, I'd be lying to you. Ministry is very times a very very hard thing it's very awful many times um, you get put down and you will be surprised at who will turn against you when you're in ministry um, you'll have friends that are King James Bible believing and they're you think to yourself well, I'm gonna have these people right up until the rapture they're gonna be my friends they're gonna stand with me they defend me and everything else and boy something will happen and just like that Boom, they turn on you, and they're your worst enemy. Are you ready for that? Are you prepared for that? It's going to happen if you go into ministry. It will happen, I'll guarantee it. 
Turn next to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And the thing there too about working with your own hands, you know, that we just read about there, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 19 is where we're going to turn. But the thing about, you know, laboring with your own hands, a lot of these big preachers in these big mega churches, you know, phallus houses, a lot of those guys, they don't want to work with their own hands. They're afraid of manual labor, you know. And that's why they're in their big, cushy, you know, six-figure digit job, you know. Little pretty boys. God ain't going to use them for one minute, I guarantee it. I've seen them, I've known them, I've talked to them, and God is far away from them. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19 says here, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law, to them that are without law as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made, notice he does not say I make myself, he says I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some, and this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. How are you going to minister to somebody that's going through the a sin of addiction? Unless you yourself have had problems with addiction and overcome it. See? How are you going to go and witness to somebody who is messed up doctrinally unless you have gone through some of that stuff yourself and come out of it? How are you going to witness to somebody who goes through depression unless you have gone through depression? How are you going to go and witness to somebody who has had marriage problems or relationship problems unless you've gone through it? Again, are you ready for that? You see, you can take the easy way out and go get a cushy little you know, church building that you can pastor and just kind of coast your way through life and let the people pay your salary, you know. And I remember this one guy, this one pastor of a Baptist church, you know, this one guy, and, and I said to him, you know, have you ever had struggles with uh, uh, heavy metal? Did you ever listen to heavy metal? No, I never listened to heavy metal. I said, did you ever, you know, have addictions to pornography? No, you know. Did you ever this? Did you ever that? No, 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 no. Just this nice little, you know, boy, that had never experienced anything in life. And you know, that guy was not able to minister very well to people. Why? He hadn't been through anything. He didn't know what it was like to have pain. He didn't know what it was like to go through sickness to the point where you're wishing you could die. You know? Had no idea. He's never had it that rough. Never known what it's like to not have a paycheck for a month. I have. I've gone through some very hard financial stuff. When I first went into ministry, oh boy, it was rough. You know? I mean, I was trying to make a living as an artistic wood turner, and it was like the Lord didn't want me in that thing, and I was just making just enough money to get by. And I was spending most of the money I made on, you know, books and things that I could research, study, and things like that. It was rough. It was very rough. Uh, I've gone through very, very deep levels of depression over the years. Um, you know, don't be deceived into thinking that you're going to have it easy if you go into full-time ministry. I don't know anybody that's in real full-time ministry that has it easy. You're going to have a rough time. And Paul is getting people ready for it, and I'm getting ready, you ready for it. All right. Uh, if you're going to do anything for the Lord, you're going to go through some rough stuff. Why? So that you can minister to other people. So that you can go to other people and they can say, you wouldn't know what it's like because you know you're just a Christian. You know you don't know what it's like to go through depression. You can say, "Oh yeah, actually I have gone through depression," and you explain it, and they go, "Wow, you really have gone through it." Oh, you don't know what it's like to be poor. You know, to go through money problems. Yeah, I do. I've been through that. You don't know what it's like this, or you don't know what it's like. That. Yeah, I've been through it. See, your testimony. If you can show people the old way that you used to live and the things that you've gone through in your life. That can mean a lot to people. So, something to think about. 1 Corinthians chapter 13.
1 Corinthians chapter 13, we're going to read verses 1 through 7 here. Another important, very important aspect of ministry. What is your motivation for ministry? Okay, you want to be in ministry, you want to serve the Lord on a full-time basis. What's your motivation? 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Notice that one. There's a lot of these people that go into the ministry because they're hirelings. And they go into there because of the money. You know, it used to be you, would have, you, know, you wouldn't have gone to be a preacher if you wanted to make a lot of money you know, in this world. But now, that's one of the highest paid positions in America. These mega church pastors are making six figures and up. You know, there's a big mega church here in this area. Their their yearly budget is seven million dollars. You make a lot of money at that thing, but they don't have charity. See, charity is self-sacrifice. Is you are you really self-sacrificing when you're going and putting on your little performance once a week or twice a week? And you're giving a nice little feel-good service and everybody comes up and, oh, it was so wonderful. Oh, you're wonderful. That's not self-sacrifice. Okay, that's self-service. But verse 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, like a lot of these mega church pastors are. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Do you rejoice in the truth? Even when the truth is negative? Hmm. Do you rejoice when you hear the economy getting worse? Do you rejoice when you see that we're about to go to war that could end up in World War III? Because you understand in your mind this is prophecy being fulfilled? Do you rejoice in the truth? Verse 7, Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Are you long-suffering? Will you be long-suffering when you get into full-time ministry? Are you willing to put up with whatever you have to put up with to serve Jesus Christ? Well, you will if you have charity. Because if you have charity, you're concern for the people out there that you're witnessing to. You're concerned for the people that you're preaching to. You want to teach them the Bible. And so when hard times come up, you say, well, whatever, I'm just going to continue on with the Lord. You're going to be found faithful. See? Well, let's uh, look up here, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We'll go there next. You say, yeah, I, so far I'm with you, Brian. I, I'm sticking with you. I have charity, and, and I'm willing to, to go through some things. And, you know, I believe the Lord's put me through some experiences in life that I could use to witness to other people. And uh, I believe my testimony would be a good one, and, and I'm not really that great. I'm not going to use enticing words of man's wisdom, and I'm kind of lowly and despised by the world and whatever. You know, okay, well, here's the next one. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3. Okay, it says here, Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. Are you going to be willing to live above reproach? So the word of God isn't blasphemed, so the word of God isn't mocked because of you messing up and being a hypocrite? See, that's going to be rough. It's not easy. Look at verse 4. But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God. You have to approve yourself as the minister of God. Uh huh. There are certain things that you can look at with a minister, a true minister of God, and you'll see these things here that are listed we're going to look at, and you can see that this guy, this guy here is being used of the Lord. This isn't a man that's been chosen by men. You know, you look at a guy like Billy Graham, and there he is, he's going and he's meeting with all these, you know, politicians, and he's meeting with presidents and stuff like that, and they're, ha, 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 laughing, having a good old time. Oh, Billy Graham, you know, here he is fishing with George Bush Sr. And, and there he is palling around with the Clintons. We're out playing golf or something like this. He's approved by men. He's not approved by God. 
that guy is a wicked, wicked false prophet. Totally wicked. And you see that with a lot of these big guys. Oh, buddy, buddy, buddy with the world. They're all friendly and happy. They're not approved of the Lord. But let's continue here. In much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. In other words, not hypocritical love. By the word of truth. Do you stand for the word of truth? Well, you do if you have the King James Bible and that's your standard. But if you're standing for any version, you're not standing for the word of truth. God can't use you. By the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. By honor and dishonor, by evil report. Are there any websites that are attacking you? Are you ready to have them attack you? Are you ready to have people steal your videos, take your videos, and put them on their channel and make them chop them up to make you look bad? Are you ready to have evil report? Do a YouTube search for my name. You'll see it. You know, it's there. People make evil reports about me. You know, they'll lie about me. By evil report and good report. Then again, I have brethren that put my videos, repost my videos, and help me get the word out. And I praise the Lord for that. That's a ministry in, in and of itself, by the way. As deceivers, like it's been put on me many times, and yet true. See, the world, the lost world will say that you're a deceiver, that you're lying to people. Yet the fact is, you're telling the truth. You know, hey, I'm open to be corrected, but you have to correct me from the book. Don't tell me I'm a liar. Don't tell me I'm a deceiver and then give me no scripture. Or give me false scriptures. See? Verse 9, as unknown and yet well known. Unknown by the world and yet well known by the brethren. In other words, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed. Are you ready to have God chasten you? Oh, God, you know, God chastens all of his sons. You know, I understand that. But... There's an extra chastening that comes on those that are really preaching the word. Why? Because God has to keep you in line. Are you ready to have him looking over every part of your life? Telling you, I want you to get rid of that. Well, Lord, I had that thing since I was a kid. Yeah. Is it a sin? Well, yeah. Burn it. Are you ready for that? If you're going to be in full-time ministry, you're going to need to do that type of a thing. You know, you're going to have to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Okay, as sorrowful, you ready for depression? Yet always rejoicing. As poor, you're not going to make $100,000 a year in the ministry. Ain't going to happen. Yet making many rich. That doesn't talk, that's not talking about carnal things down here. That's talking about spiritual riches. The ministry that you have, it needs to teach other Christians to be soul winners themselves so that they can lay up treasures in heaven. And I try to do that as much as I can. I try to exhort you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to get out there and work for the Lord, to labor for the Lord, so that you can lay up treasures in heaven. As having nothing, and yet possessing all things. How much are you going to leave behind when the rapture happens? That's something to think about. Uh, I'm not going to leave much behind when I go to be with the Lord. My wife and I don't have that many possessions. You know, Now we have more than somebody who's totally in poverty in some third world country. I understand that. But uh, we don't have a whole lot. But yet, we have more than most people. You say, what are you talking about? In heaven? You see, a long time ago, I was pursuing earthly riches. And when I decided to start working for the Lord... I got very, very convicted because I realized that my heavenly bank account was probably uh, just about hovering right around zero. You know, nothing in there. And that really convicted me, and I thought, you know, I got to work for the Lord. I got to get busy working for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've only had a couple years of, of real, true labor for the Lord, and I praise the Lord. I give all the glory and all the credit to Him for what He's done through this ministry. You know, through me, through this preaching here. It, it, it all goes to the Lord. I can't take credit for it.
but it's only been a couple years worth of labor. I wasted a lot of years, over 30 years of my life, I wasted on myself. And when I get to the judgment seat of Christ, I'm going to see a lot of things burn. A lot of those great things that I did in my past and a lot of the whatever, I'm going to see it burn. I've only had a few productive years for the Lord. Boy, it's something else. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Here's some more qualifications for you if you want to be a minister of Jesus Christ. Okay? Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. In other words, his life was threatened to the point of death. Often. <laughs> oft. You know, there. And, you know, we're not quite at the stripes, you know, being whipped, being beaten, and imprisoned yet, but we're heading there. That could come before the rapture of the body of Christ. I don't know for sure, but we're getting there. You're seeing more and more animosity towards Bible-believing Christians. Are you ready for that? Would you be ready, would you be willing to go to jail for Jesus Christ? Would you be ready and willing to be whipped publicly for Jesus Christ? Well, not if you're a hireling. Verse 24. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, and I always love this next one, in perils among false brethren. You'll have perils among false brethren. I guarantee it. I've had some of those myself. You know, you'll get around some of the false brethren and you'll start to tell the truth and they'll get mad and they will scream at you and they will just threaten you and tell you you're out of God's will and you're this and you're that, you're a rebel you and all this other stuff. They'll threaten you. Now, they aren't, I've never been physically beaten by any of these false brethren yet, but you know, I have my hopes. <laughs> no, I'm just, you know, that could come. That could come in the future. And if it happens, you say, are you going to quit the ministry at that point? No, not really. I, I don't have any plans on quitting the ministry. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue in ministry of some sort. Now, I, I can't, if my channel gets taken down, well, that's not me quitting. That's them taking my channel down. You know, if I get kicked off the Internet, it's not me quitting. It's them, you know, forcing me off. Uh, but if I get to stay on the internet, I'm going to stick around. As the Lord wills, of course. Verse 27, In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Hmm. You see, the true qualifications for somebody who's in ministry is a dangerous life. A life where you're experiencing sickness, poverty, you know, depression, lots of sorrow, and you're going to go through that, all right? I'm just being honest with you. You say, well, maybe I can work my way around that. No, you can't. It's going to happen that way. Now, if, you're, if you are ready and willing to go through whatever it takes to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and have everybody turn against you, well, then the Lord can use you, and he will use you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. And this I kind of said about earlier, but this one, this one will hurt a lot of times. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 12, verse 14. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. Paul spiritually was their father. Okay, I don't mean like a Catholic priest, father, you know, so and so. I mean, he was the one that had led them to Christ. Okay? Now look at verse 15. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more I abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. 
you will spend yourself and watch your health waste away. You'll watch your life, you know, I don't, I don't mean waste away in terms of like you're wasting your time. That's not it. But you'll notice that your health gets worse when you're really ministering for the Lord and helping out the brethren. And the sad part is a lot of times the more abundantly you love the brethren, the less they'll love you back. And the more they'll turn on you. And like I said, I've had that happen a number of times. I've had brethren, uh, people that I've known personally that, that I was really good friends with. And events happen. And they get under conviction about something else, you know, or whatever. I, you know, something I preach or whatever bothers them. And, and they turn on me. And they go from being a, a best friend to a bitter enemy. And uh, the more abundantly I love them, the less I be loved. Uh, that's not always easy. You know, I, I mean, I get people from the lost world attacking me all the time. It's just like, meh, whatever. But when you see friends and family turn against you that once loved you, it's not easy. I'm not going to tell you, ah, uh, you know, ha, 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 it doesn't bother me. It bothers me. It hurts sometimes. You say, then you're going to quit the ministry. Not on your life. Not going to happen. I won't quit the ministry until the Lord takes me out of here or there's a bullet in my head or some other way that they kill me or they totally shut me off and put me in prison and lock me in a dungeon in the ground. That's the only way I'm going to quit the ministry. I'm not quitting. You know? And if Lord, if you feel the Lord is calling you into full-time ministry, I'm just going to be, you know, I wanted to be honest with you. I've been wanting to do a sermon like this now for a while because I know I've had a lot of the brethren contact me and say about they're thinking to go into full-time ministry, I'm going to be straight with you. It's depressing at times, many times. You'll go through times of depression you just won't imagine. <laughs> you can't imagine how bad it can get sometimes. But is it worth it? That charity that you have for people, you know, it needs to be to a level where you don't care what you have to go through. You'll go through whatever it takes to serve Jesus Christ. And help out the brethren, whether or not they want it, you know. You just have to go through that stuff. You know, I want to be real with you, all right. If you want to be in full-time ministry, if you feel the Lord calling you into that thing, you have to prepare yourself for that. And now, now that I've said all this negative stuff, uh, I just want to say something else real quick, and that is. You will have intense times of sorrow, intense times of depression, intense sickness. You will have a lot of very, very bad times. But I can also tell you that you will experience more joy and more blessings when you see lives being changed and that the Lord's doing things through your ministry. You will see more blessing and more joy and peace and happiness doing the Lord's work than in anything else you'll ever experience in this life. There are times when my wife and I go through some really rough times. You know, we have arguments. It's, we can tell we're being spiritually attacked. There are other times we are just so filled with joy and, and peace. It's just like we feel like doing cartwheels. And I'm not going to do it on camera, so don't, you know, get excited. I'm not going to try to do that. I'd probably hurt myself. <laughs> but the point is, you get, there are such wonderful times in serving the Lord that all the bad things that we go through, all the, all the hardships, everything else, it's worth it. And I know that those of you out there that have been blessed by this ministry, uh, what I do, you know, is, is my greatest motivation, I guess I could say, is when I hear about lives being changed. When I hear that uh, uh, people, you know, um, have been helped by this ministry, by the preaching here and the teaching of the Word of God. And I want to hear not only that you've been helped, but that you're going out and you're witnessing to other people. And I, I pray that I, I try to inspire people to go into ministry for themselves. I certainly am not trying to monopolize any ministry type of thing and saying, you know, you have to come to here and don't ever go to anybody else. Uh, I, I try to encourage people to go into ministry. And I uh, just want to read one other verse here quick. We don't have to turn to it. But uh, this thing of, of Paul, looking at Paul as our example, 
He says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. When you see the Lord using a ministry, you know, listen to the advice of somebody like that. You can listen to the advice of the Apostle Paul. He'll give you the best advice that, that you can get. Um, a lot of what I've gone through, it's, it's kind of strange because it's like I've seen my ministry follow a lot of what Paul went through. And it's not me causing it. It's the Lord bringing situations into my life. And uh, if you get into ministry, you're going to see the same thing. You're going to see those same things that the Lord did with Paul. You're going to see them happening in your life. You know, you don't really see much about Paul getting along with his family. You know? Are you ready to have that go? You know, are you ready to have that in your life? Not get along with your family? Um, for 36 years, I was a single man. Paul was a single man. And I didn't go out looking for a wife. The Lord brought a wife into my, into my life. And uh, actually, I was the one that... Uh, witness to her and, and uh, she was actually contacted the ministry. It was through the ministry that I met my wife. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just been an amazing life uh, these last few years here. And uh, I just wanted to put this message together just to, if you're thinking about going into, into ministry, to kind of encourage you, to exhort you, but also to be real with you and so that you don't go in expecting something and then being very disappointed because of the attacks that come. Um, you're going to go through some rough times. You know, I'll tell you that. And uh, if you're very highly educated and very, very wealthy and, you know, uh, very respected and stuff and really can get along with everybody, uh, you better do some extra praying. But if you've been put down in this, in this life and you've gone through some rough stuff and you've got the scars of, of your old life, still upon you, you know, your, your sinful, lost life, and you have a really crazy testimony that how the Lord saved you, there's a good chance the Lord can use you. Lord, good chance the Lord will use you. But the key to you is being used of the Lord. The key to that is that you're going to have to be found faithful. Don't back down. So that's going to be it for this study. Um... I guess we'll close here with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for all the viewers out there, all the people that, uh, that uh, you've used this ministry, my feeble abilities, uh, to, to help the people out there. And I'm just so blessed by that, Lord. I, I thank you for all the different emails and letters and messages and things where people have said that their lives have been changed by this ministry. And I still, Lord, I... I'm shocked that you would use me to do this work. But Lord, I'm praying a special prayer today for those out there that have grown spiritually and that they are ready now to go out on their own and um, teach others uh, the mysteries of God, the, the Word of God, Lord, that you um, show us only after we get saved. And I pray, Lord, that, that if there are some stewards out there that you are calling into the ministry, I pray, Lord, above all things, that they would remain faithful and that they wouldn't quit on you and wouldn't back down with their stands, but they would stand boldly against this wicked, sinful world and that they would not fear men, but they would fear you, Lord. And, Lord, I just pray that if there's someone out there right now that is has this thing in their in their mind that this passion has been building within them that that they're seeing that there are no churches in their area and there are no preachers in their area that's just hirelings nobody's doing the work lord if they're seeing that and they're and they're not seeing people tracting and not seeing people preaching on the street and whatever lord i i just really pray that you would just use whoever it is that's watching this video Use them for your your work, Lord. Uh, do a mighty work in them and give them the strength to, to go through it. And uh, I just ask all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, that's going to be it for this study. Um, some interesting things coming up uh, that we're finding out. Uh, 
I'm going to be doing a study on childhood conversion and uh, vacation Bible school. Uh, this is a thing, and Sunday school too, by the way, we're going to be doing that. Um, this thing of ministering to little children and leading them into a prayer of salvation. And you're seeing this huge wave of people that were quote-unquote raised Christian. And then they end up getting messed up in the world and they actually turn on God and they become atheists or just wicked sinners or whatever. So I want to actually, I've been doing a study, I was trying to do it for this week and we found out some information and it's just like, wow, some interesting things, excuse me, about the Sunday School movement um, especially and also some stuff on the Vacation Bible School. But uh, we found out some things and it's just kind of like, oh boy, you know, we're not going to be able to get this study done. So I put this sermon together uh, just yesterday. We're kind of late here. This is actually Saturday as I'm recording this. It's 2.30 in the afternoon right now, so it's going to be really tough to get this thing rendered and up for you tomorrow, you know, Sunday. But uh, hopefully you're watching this at some point in time on Sunday. And our internet connection here is very slow, so it's going to take a while to upload it. But whatever, got to get done here. <laughs> Quit yapping, you know, but... Uh, uh, there's some very interesting studies coming up. Um, most of them are going to require a lot of research. So, And uh, we're also running into this thing um, of we need to really find property soon here. We're, we're looking at a definite area now. And uh, we're doing a lot of research into it. And we're probably going to be going on a trip here and be away for a week or two. Um, but I'm going to definitely make sure to have sermons up for Sunday. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I might try to do an expository study of a, a book or two of the New Testament. Just go verse by verse. Uh, I used to do that a lot when we had our house church, um, Bible Believers Fellowship. Uh, well, that was our normal Bible study program that we would do. So I might end up doing some expository studies just simply because if we're on the road a lot, traveling and things it's going to be very hard to do these detailed studies um, but we are definitely going to be coming out with some very very interesting information um, especially regarding the Sunday school movement and the vacation Bible school thing um, interesting things I've been finding out about new versions too so Lord's been showing us a lot of truth and I definitely want to bring that stuff out in the future but like I said it's kind of weird with the timing right now trying to find a property um, I'll say this, and please be in prayer about this. Uh, the move that we're thinking about making is going to be a pretty good drive away. Um, about 12 hours, essentially, drive from where we're currently at. So it's, it's going to be a bigger move. Um, but we're praying about it. We're, I'm not going to say anything more right now, but you know, we're really praying about this thing. And uh, so I guess that's going to be it. Uh, please continue to pray for us. I can tell you right now, um, one of the things that's so encouraging to me is there are days when we're just really having a hard time and, and we're just really feel down and really feel that spiritual oppression upon us and really feel like we're being attacked spiritually. And all of a sudden it's just like things just really turn around and we just have joy and, you know, it just really feels like Christians are praying for us. Um, and I really, really appreciate that. Uh, we can feel your prayers. We can see the Lord's blessing uh, there. And it's just so neat to see that, to know that, that there are people out there praying for us. So please keep it up. We really do appreciate that. We couldn't survive without your prayers. Uh, just as simple as that. I, w I wouldn't make it. You know, um, There have been many times when I've just been at the end and just been like, you know what, I'm going to quit. You know, and the Lord sends some brother along, some sister along, and they tell me their testimony, how the Lord has, has used this ministry to help them. And that just motivates me, gets me right back on track. And I feel the prayers of, of all you out there and just really, really neat. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching. If you feel the Lord calling you into ministry, um, pray about that and keep studying and start working for the Lord. Start out small. That's another thing I just want to say here real quickly um, before I end this. Don't feel like you have to have a huge worldwide ministry within the first week of you going into the ministry. 
all right, let the Lord build the thing for you. Um, don't yoke up with all kinds of worldly things to try and grow your ministry. That's not the way to do it. Uh, let the Lord build it, okay? And he'll, he'll direct you. And I'll tell you right now, looking back at my past, when I first got started in ministry, I would not have been ready for what I have right now. Um, it just wouldn't have happened. And so the Lord has slowly worked things out and worked things and worked things and worked things to the point where you know, I'm able to handle the amount of work that comes in right now. So let the Lord build your ministry. Uh, if, if you want to get started, I would say start out with your testimony. Record your testimony, put it on YouTube. Um, write it down, put it on a website, put it on a little, make a little tract or something like that. You know, that might be an idea. Um, go out, preach on the street. You know, uh, go pass out tracts. Work your way up. You say, well, I don't really have the guts to pass out tracts to people. Okay, then go to restaurants, put them in the restroom, put them in the break room, put them in the lobby, put them, not, not in the break room, you can't get back there, but, you know, put them in the lobby, um, whatever start out small work your way up and you know if the lord if the lord is calling you into ministry he's going to make that plain to you okay you're going to feel that and uh, let the lord commend you let the, and but be found faithful so that's going to be it thank you very much for watching